We're in lockdown. Hello, welcome back. <laughs> it's crazy this, isn't it? How is lockdown treating you? Let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Um, I'm, I'm quite enjoying it, to be honest. It's only day two, but I really, really struggle for time most of the time. <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, I'm a business owner, family, uh, probably too many hobbies, in all honesty. Uh, and then on top of that, YouTube making videos, I just, I really, really struggle to have time to, to push content out there. So having this couple of weeks sort of free time is actually really, really good for me. I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, and I'm only on day two. So um, things I'm going to be getting done, engine build. Started this oh, <laughs> straight after New Year. <laughs> but, and I went, I was ill actually. Uh, probably it's coronavirus to be honest. Maybe I'm immune. Who knows? Uh, but I was ill, so I didn't really push on with it. And then work just whoosh, took off. So I, I just haven't had time to do it. So to get the time to do it now is pretty awesome. I'm going to bash straight on with this. I've got a load of other little projects to do with the Lupo. Not much other content, in all honesty, because let's face it, I'm not really allowed to venture out. Uh, but I do have a lot of time on my hands because my wife is a key worker. Uh, my daughter is getting homeschooled, the school that she goes to. So it's just pretty cool. I've got time on my hand. So, you know, go in the garage, turn the camera on. What happens, happens. Obviously you've got time on your hands as well. So don't forget to hit subscribe. It would be cool to have you on board. If you want to see this engine come together, stuff with the loop or I've got, oh, I've got loads planned. You know, as soon as I'm allowed out. It's like, <laughs> but anyway, on this video, I'm going to continue with the engine block checking. Um, Things I've got to do on this one is the main bearing oil clearances, need to check them. Um, I also need to do the main bearing, bearing crush. Did I say bearing twice there? Anyway, let's get on with it. Main bearing oil clearance, just like the big end oil clearance that we've done in previous videos where we did that on the rods, uh, the main bearing oil clearance is the difference between the external diameter of the main bearing journal on the crankshaft, which we've already measured on the crankshaft video, and the internal diameter of the main bearing cup with the bearing installed. Uh, the crankshaft doesn't sit on metal, it sits on a thin film of oil. That oil is your main bearing oil clearance uh, and therefore it has to be maintained all the time. So really, really important. Uh, plus any problems with the main bearing journal or main bearing, main bearing oil clearance, anything like that, straight away can have a negative effect on your big end oil clearance. Uh, so really, really important this one. So in the words of Turbo Tom, let's get to work. So to test the oil bearing clearance, first of all I have to make sure that the block is absolutely immaculate. Uh, also the bearings and the main caps, uh, the registers that they sit on have to be absolutely immaculate too. On this project I'm going to be using ARP main studs, so I have to make sure that they are also immaculate. To install the studs you just have to tighten them down hand tight. Locate the bearings on both sides of the tunnel. And then slide the cap over. You have to be careful when you're installing the main bearing caps because it can only go a certain way. And the way I do it, it's pretty simple, is that I have the engine mounted on an engine stand. The engine stand is always bolted to the flywheel end. So if you have the engine stand on your right hand side, then when you look at the main cap, you'll see the numbered. If you start with the number five, the number five is the one on the right hand side. And you should be able to see the number five the right way around. If it's upside down, well then it's wrong. Plus, if you mix them up, it's going to be wrong as well. So, without a doubt, make sure that your number five start on the right hand side and then populate it going to the left, and you can't go wrong. And another way of checking that your caps are on the right way is that the locating notches where your tongues go in on the cap and the tunnel, they go on what will be the front of the engine, uh, and then your tongues for your big ends, so your rods, they go on the back. So, always make sure that your tongue is facing front, start from the right, number five, right orientation on the number, you can't go wrong. Because if you do go wrong, you're gonna regret it. Using ARP lube, you can then tighten them down in three equal steps to 60 foot pounds.
So that's all the main caps tightened down now and across all five of them um, I'm getting 54.03, 54.03, 54.03, 54.03 uh, but my number five cap 54.035 so just a smidge more on that one and uh, that one was the first one I measured so there's no chance that one is you know like possibly down to temperature training like that. I did remeasure it a couple of times on both sides of the bearings because when the the bearings in the block there's actually two parts to it you've got a groove in the middle so I've measured both sides and they're both showing exactly the same so I'm not really concerned about that because let's face it that's oh, a thousandth of a millimeter it makes no difference whatsoever um, and as a side note on the last video when I measured my pistons for my piston wall clearance on my number four piston uh, it was brought to my attention by Martin Emmett thanks very much and um, that Possibly the deviation in measurement that I was getting was because I was holding the micrometer and therefore the heat in the micrometer by the time I got to the fourth piston would have made a difference to the measurement. And you know what it is, I, I was a bit skeptical, but I actually, I've come back and I've measured that and it's actually true. That piston is, uh, what is it, 82.88 millimeters, exactly the same as the rest of them. So. Thanks very much, Martin. I would never have uh, thought about that. Um, so, you know, every day is a school day. Thanks very much. Uh, getting back to the main bearings. So with them sort of internal diameters and I subtract my crankshaft main bearing uh, journal of the crankshaft video, which is 53.97. It leaves me with a main bearing oil clearance of 0.06 of a millimeter and that's my phone going off i mean you should have turned that off <laughs> apart from my number five obviously which is just slightly more really really not concerned about that because i'll i'll check that with plastic gauge when we put it together now the specs for these is uh, out the bentley manual is 0 0.01 to 0 0.04 with a wear limit of 0 0.15 which is like six thou huge um as you know like everything else i don't want to be at the tight end bottom end i don't want to be you know at the loose end as well so to sit pretty much just shy of the middle at just you know i think it's about that 0 0.06 is 2.3 thou um so i was aiming for you know anywhere between two and three maybe even go to three and a half thou so to, to be bang on 2.36 I'm, I'm really happy with that no problems at all um so that is the main bearings done now to get on to bearing crush. Bearing crush, just like when we checked on the big ends on the last video, um, we need to crack off one side of the main bearing cap when it, hopefully it should lift up enough to show us what the bearing crush measurement is. Now, these are a similar size bearing to the big ends. So the spec on the King's Racing website is exactly the same. So I'm looking for, again, that magic window of between four and eight thou. And that will confirm that my bearing outer diameter is bigger than the bear than the main cap internal diameter, which means that the bearing's actually being crushed and therefore will pop open again. So let's crack off one of the uh, bolts on each of the cups, and then we'll see what it is. So we've got our feeler gauges. Let's have a look. So we'll start with four thou. Four thou goes in no problem whatsoever. Five thou. Oh, so a little bit of resistance there. Six thou. Oh, it's probably 
Mm, it's going in a smidge, but not not a great deal. And five thou feels all right. If truth be told, it's probably about five and a half thou, something like that. So between five and six thou on my number one main bearing cap. It's pretty good. Let's try the rest. So the King Racing Bearing Uniformity Strikes, yet again, I'm going to call that five and a half thou across all five main bearings. Every single one of them responded exactly like the number one, so the five was just a little bit too slack to be five, to be honest. And the six was just, it just couldn't quite get in there, it was just starting to get in there, so uh, I haven't got a five and a half thou feeler gauge, so, you know, best educated guess based on the measurements, I'm going to call, my build sheet's going to say five and a half thou. I'm happy with that. So, bearing crush, done. So that's it. The engine block is done. Really, really happy with that. That's a nice tick in the box. Uh, it's nice to actually go through the procedure and stuff to work out, if you know what I mean. But the really cool thing about this now is that this thing is checked. All that's checked. I'm happy with the bearings, which are a very fundamental part of the engine build. So I'm happy to chuck this together now. So going forward, it's going to be more assembly videos. So if you're into engine assembly, I'm going to try and film it and break it down. Filming it adds loads of time on, to be honest, but it's all good crack. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you liked it, remember to hit like, subscribe. Thanks very much. See you in the next one. <laughs>